So this morning we're going to look at some decomposition, single replacement, and double replacement problems. Uh, just some examples and working through them. On this first page for decomposition, um, we're going to look at the first equation. On the side we have our wrap chart already. Um, reactants, atoms, and products. So on the reactant side, we have, it says K2. So there are going to be two potassium on our reactants. We have C with no subscript after it. So there's gonna be one of those. And a three after the O. So we have three oxygen on our reactant side. On our product side, we have K2. So we have two potassium. one carbon, and then we have one oxygen with the potassium, and we have two oxygens with the carbon. So that's gonna make a total of three oxygen. Now we're gonna see where we have to balance. So we have two potassium, two potassium, one carbon, one carbon on either side of the reaction, and three oxygen, three oxygen. So since these are all equal, What we're gonna do is we're gonna go add coefficients of one because that means we don't have to have anything change. Those amount of molecules are perfect for this reaction to happen. So that is reaction number one. The second one, we're gonna look at doing the equation way. So we have one sodium to start with on our reactants, one chlorine, and O3, we have three oxygen on our reactant side. On the other side of our arrow, on our products, we have one sodium, we have one chlorine, and we have two oxygen. So in this case, our sodium and chlorine are equal, but our oxygen, we have three and two. So we wanna think, what is the least common multiple of three and two, not including one? So in this case, three and two, their least common multiple is gonna be six. So in order to get the O2, to equal six, we would have to put a coefficient of three. So if we times this two by three, that would give us six. For the reactant side, we would have to do three times two to give us six. And I'm just multiplying the coefficient down here, just so I know this two times this three, that's where I get my six from. The coefficient also goes into the sodium and chlorine here because it's on the outside. So two times one sodium is now gonna be two sodium, and two times one chlorine is now going to be two chlorine. So now our chlorine and sodium are a little off. So on this side we have one, and we need them to equal two. So if we multiply these by two, that'll give us two sodium and two chlorine. If I put a coefficient of a two. So now I have two and two, two and two for chlorine and six and six for oxygen. This is my balanced equation with coefficients of two, two and three. Our last one for decomposition we're gonna look at um, is silver oxide. So we have, we're gonna do the wrap chart again here on the side, we have AG and we have O. So for our silver on our reactant side, we have two, AG2, means there are two of them. O, we have one oxygen to start with. On our product, the other side of our arrow, we have one silver and we have two oxygen. So right now these don't look quite balanced. Um, this is pretty easy because we are going from one to two. So these, since they're separate, are a lot easier to add coefficients to. So looking at um, the silver, what we would have to do to that is we would have to add a two to the silver. And if we did that, We'd have to cross out on our wrap chart, so that'd be one times two would be two. So now our silver are equal, but we have two oxygen in our products and one in our reactants. So we need to multiply this oxygen by two to get it to equal two. If we add a two here, 
we now have two for oxygen, but now we have two times two silver. So that's gonna equal four silver. And now we have to go and change the one in our product one more time. So instead of a two here, if we have one and we need it to equal four, we're gonna times that by a four. So now we have four silver, four silver, two oxygen, two oxygen. With this blank right here, since we need just two oxygen, blank times two equals two, one times two is two, so we're just gonna put a coefficient of a one here. And this is our balanced equation. Two, four, and one. Next, we're going to look at something that's slightly harder, a single replacement. So in this case, uh, the sulfate, we have zinc plus copper sulfate uh, yields or uh, creates zinc sulfate plus copper. So you'll see that the sulfate is switching metals from zinc to copper when it becomes the products. So on our reactant side, we have one zinc, we have one copper, we have one sulfate, which is also one sulfur and four oxygen. On our product side, so on the other side of our arrow, our products, we have one zinc, we have one sulfur for oxygen, or also one sulfate, and we have one copper. So let's see if anything needs to be balanced here. So zinc, we have one and one. Copper, we have one and one. Sulfur, one and one. And oxygen is also four and four. So since they're all balanced already, to keep it the way it is, we're gonna go and add one coefficients. And that is our final balanced equation, is all coefficients with one. Our next problem gets a little more difficult. We have uh, magnesium plus uh, hydrogen nitrate is gonna create magnesium nitrate plus a hydrogen molecule. So you're seeing that the magnesium and hydrogen are swapping out. That's the replacement uh, that is happening. So using our wrap chart, on our reactant side, we're gonna determine how many we have. So we have one magnesium, we have one hydrogen, and we have one nitrate. You could also separate that into three oxygen and one nitrogen. is another way to separate. On our product side, so we have the parentheses here. And what these stand for is there are two of everything inside here. So there are gonna be two NO3s. And what that would mean is our magnesium, we would have one, because it's not in the parentheses. For our nitrate, we have the nitrogen would have two times N, and the oxygen would have two times three, since there are three oxygen. So the oxygen there would be six total. And then for our hydrogen, we have H2. H equals two, sorry. There are two hydrogen. So here we have an extra hydrogen in our product, and we have an extra nitrate in our product, NO3. So on this side, what we need to do is figure out what we can do. So we need two for hydrogen and two for nitrate. Those just so happen to be part of the same compound on our reactants. So if we need two of each, what we can do is if we do hydrogen times two, two times hydrogen, that now is two and two, 
and that two also multiplies the nitrogen and the oxygen. That would create two NO3s, just like that are on the product. So now we have two and two and one and one. So our equation is balanced by just adding one coefficient here to the reactant side. So since our others are balanced, all we need to do is we need to go back and just add our ones if they're already balanced. So since magnesium, there's one on each side. So one and one to balance everything. And then one on the H2. So our coefficients are one, two, one, one. All right, so our last one we're gonna look at is our double replacement. For the double replacement, we are going to do a couple of problems um, we're going to look at the first one up here. This one involves swapping both metals and nonmetals here. So the aluminum iodide is going to become aluminum chloride, and the mercury chloride is going to become mercury iodide. So they're swapping metals and nonmetals. Um, same as the bottom reaction as well. So for our aluminum, we have Al, so we have one aluminum. I3, we have three iodine. HG, we have one mercury and we have two chlorine on our reactant side. On our product side, we have Al again. So we have one aluminum again, Cl3. So now we have three chlorine and we had two to start with. So we have one extra in our products. HG, we have one mercury. So our metals didn't change. We still have one of each and we have two iodine. So the things that changed were our iodine and our chlorine are the two, our two non-metals changed. Those are located here. We have chlorine, iodine, chlorine, and iodine. Whatever coefficients we're gonna have to put is also going to affect our mercury and our chlorine, or our mercury and our aluminum. So we just have to be mindful of that. So. If we have three and two, our least common multiple of three and two is gonna be six. And that's the same for both chlorine and iodine. So to get this iodine to equal to six, we are going to have to put, and I'll put least common multiple over here, equals six. If we put a two coefficient on our aluminum iodide, that's going to give us now two aluminum and two times three, that's going to give us six iodine. So to balance that out in our product side, for the iodine here to equal six, that two, we would have to multiply by a three. So three times two, that's gonna give us six iodine. So now our iodine are balanced. And that's also gonna give us three times Hg. That's gonna give us three for our mercury. So now our mercury are not balanced anymore and our aluminum are not, and our chlorine is not yet balanced. So to balance our chlorine, we have three and two. So six again for our least common multiple. If we multiply that by a three, Three times the one for mercury gives us three. So now our mercury are balanced. Three times Cl2 is going to give us six chlorine on one side. We have three on the other. Our product is not yet balanced. So our last things we have to balance are aluminum and chlorine and they happen to be part of the same element. We need two aluminum on our products and we need six chlorine. So for the six chlorine and two aluminum, we need to times this by two. So one times two will give us two aluminum and two times three chlorine will give us six chlorine. So now we're gonna go back and we're just gonna double check really quick to make sure that our whole equation is balanced so I have two aluminum in my reactants. I have two in my products. 
six iodine in my reactant. 